Hello everyone, a very warm welcome to you to this third session of uh, the Westerville City uh, Schools Wellness Week webinar series organized by the Heartfulness Institute. Uh, my name is Nino Tiwari. I'm an associate professor at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. And it's a real pleasure to be uh, here with you today. So before we begin, I wanted to invite you to center yourself. Uh, so let's take a moment to do that. Um, in fact, I would say let's join each other uh, in a collective heart shake. We can't see each other, we can't greet each other, we can't uh, be with each other. So instead, let's connect with the hearts. So I invite you to gently close your eyes or soften your gaze. Feel your feet firmly on the ground. Allow yourself to sink deeper in your chair or seat. Take a few simple breaths in and out. And feel your entire body relax. Feel your mind relax. And now connect with your heart. Bringing your attention where the heart beats. And center yourself there. Go deep in your heart and notice the lightness that you feel in your being as you connect with the deepest core of your own self. And now feel this lightness radiating out and touching each and every one on this webinar creating a circle of connected hearts. Let's make the thought as well that may this hour that we spend together be to a collective benefit. Just gently stay with your eyes closed for a few seconds. And then when you're ready, you can open your eyes and take a moment to arrive here and now in this present moment. So let's get started. In the first seminar, uh, you heard about the science of meditation. In the second, you heard about the power of thought. And today we will talk about the story of you, who gets to write it, and what is it? Essentially, it is a story of change and transformation and growth. So I'll share the plan for today. I'll share my screen. So here it was, our heart shake. And let's move on. This is our plan for the day. So we'll begin with a couple of simple um, journaling exercises, writing exercises. One is called meeting yourself, and then uh, a few deeper reflections, which we will analyze through the Juhari window. Then we'll talk about mind frames, judgments or stories that we tell ourselves and how they can be empowering or non-empowering. Then we'll ask, who holds the key in writing the story of me? And in particular, we'll talk about learning from the constriction phase of life. And we'll end with a short meditation and talk about how when we take charge of our own story, we essentially are designing our own destiny. So let's get started with the first exercise. If you can pull out your journals, 
Uh, let's answer a few questions. First, a couple of very simple questions. One is, what are you feeling right now in your body? And along with that, what's alive in you in this moment? You can just take a moment, close your eyes if you wish, and just reflect on this. And then write it down on a piece of paper or a new journal. And here are some examples of words, but feelings that come up. The ones in the lighter color are positive feelings. And then there's an inflection point. And the ones at the bottom are heavier feelings. So this is called the mood elevator developed by Larry Sen. So now that we know what we are feeling, let's go a little bit deeper. So keep your journals handy and record your responses uh, to the following questions that I'll ask one at a time. So the first question is this, in your journal, write down three or four words that you think best describe you. The first few words that come to mind that you associate with yourself and that others also probably associate them with you. All right, so let's move on to the second question. Oh, before uh, I go on, uh, I wanted to just give you some words as examples of descriptions of oneself, as you can see on the screen. We can describe ourselves in several ways. All right. So keep these words in mind because we will uh, use them as we go forward, but there can be other words as well. The second question is, what is one trait that you're not too happy about and that you would like to let go of? Anything. Right. So if you have that down, let's move to the third question. Have you been surprised by someone who told you about a trait that you had that you were not aware of? And this could be a positive trait or a negative trait. But something that others see about you that you were not. familiar with about yourself, or you didn't see about yourself. So just take a moment, reflect on it, and write it down. And now let's move to the final question. What is that one quality or trait that you'd really like to cultivate in yourself, that you aspire towards? All 
right? So now that you have all these questions answered, let's um, move on and ask ourselves, where are we going with this? What is this about? And what I want to show you is that these words are really windows into ourselves. And it's an exercise in self-awareness. So we'll talk a little bit about how we bring this together through a framework called the Juhari window. As it says here, it is an interactional self-awareness model of disclosure and feedback. And it maps a person's feelings, experiences, skills, knowledge, attitudes, intentions, motivations um, in relation to themselves and others. And this can be used in multiple ways, in work settings, and then in, this, in the context of personal growth as well. This is what it looks like. It's a two by two matrix. And at the top is um, the self. And on the left, on the y axis, are others. So the first quadrant is one where um, there are traits that are known to me or known to the self, and they're also known to others. This is called the open or free arena. It's called the arena and it's open, open to all. The second um, uh, quadrant reflects qualities that are not known to me, but might be known to others. So the questions that you wrote about something that you were surprised when somebody brought up, that, oh, you're like this and you felt, am I? I didn't know that. So that's called the blind spot. These are qualities we have, but we are blind to them. The third quadrant on the left here is called the hidden arena, the hidden area. And here there are qualities or habits or traits that I am aware of that I have but are not known to others. And then the final one, number four, is unknown. These are qualities, potential qualities, potential skills, talents that are not known to me yet, and they're also not known to others. So just the interpretation of this in terms of how it plays out in our everyday lives so this first quadrant, which is called the arena or the open quadrant, the bigger this quadrant is, the more open the person is, like an open book. Others know a lot about you and you know a lot about yourself. And therefore it is easier to form relationships with others because there is a better understanding, um, mutual understanding. And this builds trust, and it can be also a source of um, good communication, cooperation, collective action, and reduces the possibility of confusion or mistrust. So gr the greater the self-awareness we have about our traits, and the more open we are about them, that is the more comfortable we are with them in our own skin, the bigger this area is in our charts. Quadrant two, the blind spot, represents ignorance uh, about oneself or you know, limited self-awareness um, or information that is withheld from me uh, for whatever reason, feedback uh, is not given. And so I don't know, um, uh, you know certain aspects of, of how I am. And I don't elicit feedback either. So it could be all of that. As we become more self-aware, this quadrant shrinks. As we become more comfortable with ourselves and sharing with others who we really are, this quadrant shrinks. And change is involved here. Quadrant three, the hidden quadrant, then represents feelings and sensitivities and fears and other aspects or other traits um, that I may hide from others for some reason. I'm not comfortable with uh, sharing those traits 
or I have issues. Um, but the bigger this quadrant is, the more likely that my relationship, the more likely it is that my relationships will be difficult or hard because trust is hard to build. I know something about myself that I'm not sharing. And the fourth quadrant, this represents the subconscious or the superconscious or untapped potential, hidden strengths, unexplored dimensions, aptitudes, feelings, and so forth. It's untried, untested, and so there's a huge potential for growth. So as all, the whole point about this is that as we become, as we change, as we grow, as we become more self-aware in a multiple, uh, you know, in, in different ways, that is we elicit feedback about our blind spots. And so this arena becomes bigger as more and more from here goes in there. We share with others, you know, more openly what we really like and we explore the unknown untapped potential that we have. And so the goal is for this open arena to expand as much as possible. And the more this expands, the freer in a sense we are, because we are what we are on the inside as we are on the outside. And so what does this all mean? It means that a change in any one quadrant really involves change in all the others. Moving towards this larger arena requires a willingness to change. That is key. And so change oriented or evolutionary practices that make us more self-aware will help that first quadrant grow. And as that quadrant grows, we become more centered, more stable, and as I, said, as I said before, more comfortable in our own skin. And so we begin to build relationships that are easier and that brings more happiness and that brings greater creativity and it really makes life easier. As this last point says, that when we are comfortable in our own skin, we are more likely to be the same outside as inside. So as we change and as we try to become more self-aware, what is it that guides us? And what we'll talk about and what you've been hearing about in the last two webinars is that it is the heart that guides us. That part of ourself, which is our rudder, the seat of our highest self is the heart. It's a charging station and it is a place where wisdom resides. So when intelligence reaches its apogee and when you connect it with the heart, it really becomes wisdom and the heart guides us. And as you may have experienced as well, that sometimes we already know in our skin, in our hearts. But why don't we always act upon it? And why don't we always hear that inner guidance? That's because sometimes our inner environment is turbulent and muddy. There's a lot of baggage. There are a lot of thoughts that come in the way. And I don't hear the wisdom of the heart that moves me towards self-awareness, greater consciousness, greater centeredness, and really an ability to fulfill my potential by even expanding uh, what is in the fourth quadrant and bringing it all to this arena, which I can work with and I know about. So inner waters that are muddy and turbulent come in the way. And the second most important thing is that we wear a lot of filters. We have a lot of judgment that comes from tendencies that we have or experiences that we have had in the past that makes our view of ourselves and of others narrow. We try something, it doesn't quite work. And we say, well, I'll never be good at it. And so we don't try again. Or we've had a difficult experience with someone and we label them as a difficult person, as a person that I can't be friends with. So even before we dig deeper, we see the world through these layers of judgment. 
And really, it is about, you know, if we only open ourselves up to listening to what the heart can say, the answers will come gushing in. But as I said, when our mind is turbulent, as turbulent as a deafening sea, and noisy, we can't really hear. So how do we make our mind clear so that we can be guided by the heart within? I just want to share a little video here, uh, which is about how we limit ourselves through our own judgments. So let's take a look at it. Kid. Every time I'm pulling out, he's right there. Man, I think someone needs to talk to his parents if they're ever at home. What is up with the traffic today? It's always, every day, this intersection's always crowded. I hate pulling out of here. We need some of these dumb roads. Oh, there's. <laughs> okay, so I'm not even here. Right. Great lady, the princess of parking. Sure, take this spot. Way to be considerate. Oh, you kidding me? Unbelievable. Oh, thank you, man. Oh, it's about time. Let's see, what do I want? Uh, yeah, could I add a cookie to that order? Yeah, no problem. Yeah, uh, no problem, only guy in the world. I'm sure you need your cookie. The world. Your oyster, well, and he's serving our cookies. Thanks, Thank you so much. Uh -huh. What can I get for you? Uh, yeah, I'll talk to you, Cat Macchiato. Yeah, sure, no problem. Three eighty-five. And uh, it might take a few minutes here. We've got quite a line, obviously. And thanks for your patience. Great. Yeah, <laughs> great. Great for me. Waiting again. Unbelievable. What? What? What is that? What in the world? What am I supposed to do? How can I how can I do anything about that? Can I even help with that? I don't your copy, sir. Oh. I can't I can't take this anymore. I gotta get out of here. Hey, what? Buddy, come here. So 
So let's just take a moment. And just write down for yourself what you experienced after seeing that video. What came up for you? Just take one moment. So what it shows us is how our filters disconnect us, how our judgments disconnect us. That at core, we're all connected. And if we can see each other's humanity, life can be more peaceful, life can be more productive. Life can be more joyful. And how do we do that? If we can only pause and connect with that place within us that recognizes the deepest part of the place within the other person. From the deepest part of me to the deepest part of you. That is what real connection is. And it doesn't require words. We don't have to say anything. We just have to have that inner attitude and that inner ability to see the humanity in everyone. That everyone has the same universal needs. Be loved, to be loved, understood, all of those universal needs that we have. So what are some techniques by which we can do this on a daily basis? One is learning the importance of the power of the pause, that when we are getting aggravated or something has happened that we don't like or an outcome has come about that we are disappointed by, something that makes us angry, whatever it is, any discord, rather than letting our energies be out there, in the moment, out there, in the moment, let's bring those energies back into ourselves and take a tiny little pause and connect with our hearts, the deepest part of ourself. Just connect for a moment and see whatever it is that comes up. And what you will get is a space between stimulus and response. So we'll not, you will, we, will re, we will rarely react then, but we will appropriately respond. The charge of the situation dissipates. So that is the invitation to you of trying a contemplative practice any part of it and making it a habit, making it part of your lives. So when we take a moment to pause and connect with our innermost core, as it says on the slide, our hearts begin to open, our awareness begins to expand and our filters gradually drop off. And meditation is an intentional pause. So the pause I described a minute ago can be just a moment. It can be a few seconds. It can be a minute. It can be anything. It can happen at any time. But in addition to that, we can practice this intentional pause and connect with our deepest self every morning or every day and really utilize the opportunity to recharge ourselves in this expansive way so that we can become who we ought to be.
And so the point is that the answer to this question of who holds the key to how my life is going to go or what the story of my life is going to be, the answer is really that it's me. We hold the key. The more we open ourselves up, the more we center ourselves, the more we become comfortable with who we are, the more we become aware of who we are and what we can potentially be, and the more we are open to change, we write the story of our lives. And before we practice, pause for a few moments here, I want to share with you uh, one, one observation um, that often happens, it often comes up in our lives, that as change begins to happen in our lives, it's not easy. Things come up and there are times in our lives we feel very constricted, very restricted. We want things to change and they're not changing. We are trying and trying and trying and still things are the same. Um, and we become frustrated or we become tired and fatigued and sometimes we are willing to give up. But if you know uh, Joseph Campbell's um, hero story, that as we come closer and closer to change, we really need to redouble our efforts. And similarly, I want to illustrate that with the story of the larva becoming a butterfly. So we'll talk a little bit about the pupa stage and the power of the pupa stage. So when a, and you've seen larvae and you've seen the pupa within which the larva transforms and eventually becomes a butterfly and then the pupa opens up and the butterfly flies away. But as the larva is turning and becoming a butterfly, there comes a phase towards the end where it is like a butterfly now. It's no longer just a worm, it is a butterfly. It has wings and it has, you know, everything that a butterfly has. And now it is constricted in this larva, in this, in this pupa, in the same um, sort of uh, space uh, where the larva had uh, evolved. And that can become difficult. It's, there's not enough room. A lot more is going on now. Growth has taken place. And so you often see, as the pupa becomes transparent towards the end, you often see that the wings of the butterfly are really moving and flapping and trying to, you know, trying to open up, trying to leave that place. So there's a story of a person who used to find, who used to walk by a certain um, garden where there was um, a pupa, where the larva was um, becoming a butterfly and he would watch um, the change every day. And he came upon this phase when this was happening, what I just described, that the pupa was very transparent and he could see that the butterfly has all the wings and it has everything that it needs, but it's trapped, it is constricted. And he said, he felt so sad for the butterfly and said, it really needs to go out there and be free. Something has gone wrong with the program of this pupa and it should have opened up by now and it hasn't so tomorrow I'm going to come and help this butterfly so the next day when uh, this person walked by they brought a pair of scissors and you know with great joy and with great uh, sort of you know love for this butterfly they thought they will free them up and so they cut the pupa thinking that the butterfly will now just take off but instead the butterfly fell to the ground never to fly again. And why is that? That is, that in that last stage of the pupa, that constriction phase of the pupa, nature is trying to get all the blood from the body of the larva that has now become a butterfly. It's pushing all of that into its wings so that the wings become stronger, they become strengthened, and they're able to fly. It is only through that pressure of flapping its wings in this constricted space that that blood can be pushed into the wings. And this person in their seeming generosity sort of aborted that phase. So there's a big lesson for us that when we open ourselves up to change, life is not always gonna be easy. 
but let's be patient with ourselves and let's recognize the power of the pupa stage of our lives. We are muscling up, we are building up muscles that will allow us to soar later. It depends upon how we look at it. So with that, I wanted to invite you uh, to join me in a short meditation. Um, we will just take a few minutes and meditate. Uh, I will guide you through um, uh, the practice and then we'll take just about 10 minutes and then we will open our eyes and uh, end, end the session. So we're going to take these few minutes to practice inner connection, connecting with our hearts. So I invite you to sit comfortably with your eyes gently closed. Take a few breaths in and out. Let your shoulders drop and relax. Let's first relax the body using the energies of the earth. So bring your awareness to your toes. Move your toes a bit and feel your feet relax. Feel as if a healing and grounding energy is rising up from the earth to help you relax every part of your body. This energy of the earth is supporting us at all times. But now, let's use it intentionally to relax ourselves. So allow this energy to move up to your feet, relaxing the soles of your feet, heels, and ankles. Feel the energy move up to your legs and knees, relaxing your lower legs. Feel the energy move to your upper legs, thighs, seat, and hips. Relaxing all of these muscles, letting go of any tension that might be present. Feel the energy then move to your abdomen, gut, and waist. We hold a lot of tension in our gut. So allow this energy to help you let go of any stress, any constriction, any tension from your gut. And feel your belly go soft as you relax. Feel the energy now move to your back, relaxing every muscle in your lower back. And then feel this energy spread throughout your back. rising vertebrae by vertebrae, all the way up to the base of your neck and across your shoulder blades. Feel your entire back relax. And now bring your awareness to your chest. 
Feel the healing energy of the earth. Help you release any tightness, any heaviness. Any stress from your chest. Allow this healing energy to dive a little bit deeper and help you let go of emotions that might be burdensome. Any anger, sadness, worry, disappointment. Just allow all of that to be released. Feel your entire chest area lighten. Allow the energy to move to your shoulders. Feel your shoulders simply melt away as they relax. And then feel the healing energy of the earth. Move down your arms, relaxing your upper arms, elbows and forearms, wrists and hands, fingers and fingertips. Keeping your arms relaxed and loose. And now bring your awareness to your neck. Feel this healing energy help you relax every muscle in your neck and upper back. Letting go of any stiffness, any tension. And now bring your awareness to your face. Feel all of your facial muscles soften. As you relax your jaw, and allow the healing and grounding energy of the earth help you relax your mouth, cheeks, nose and eyes. temples, ears and your lobes and your forehead. Relaxing all the way up to the top of your head and on to the back of your head. As you scan your system from top to toe, notice how your entire body is deeply relaxed. There's any part of you that is still holding some tension, then allow the energy of the earth to attend to it for a little bit longer. And now bring your awareness to your heart, resting your attention where the heart beats or in the chest a bit to the left in the heart center. Go deep in your heart and connect with the source of love and light that's already present in your heart. This is connected to the source of love and light in the universe. Immerse yourself in this place of love and light and become absorbed in yourself for a few moments. 
allowing the feeling of light in your heart to take you to a deeper awareness. For the next few minutes, if thoughts arise, that's all right. Try not to fight them, nor to entertain them. Just witness them as they leave. Just as bubbles bubble up and then evaporate, let them rise and be released. And gently remind yourself that you're meditating on the source of light in your heart and return to your heart. Let's stay here till you hear a prompt. And now gently, with your eyes still closed, try to absorb the feelings, this very brief meditation into your heart. Absorb the feelings of love and light that unconditional love and light that nurtures us at all times if we connect with it. And let's end this brief meditation by allowing this feeling of love and light in our hearts to radiate out into our environment, our neighborhoods, and out into the world. Let's make the thought that anyone that encounters these vibratory 
states, benefits from them, that their hearts are also filled with love and light, and that peacefulness and balance are growing in all hearts. And with that, when you're ready, you can gently open your eyes. So if you wish, you can write down for yourself what you felt. during this brief meditation. Just take a moment, make a note of it. And in closing, I want to end by reiterating that when we connect with ourselves, allow our filters and limitations to drop through a contemplative practice like this, which is free and always available. We have a guide, an inner guide that guides us. And so we can design our own destiny write our own story. And you may ask that to sit with your eyes closed for a few minutes every day might feel good, but how can it transform me? How can it allow me to find the purpose of my life and change my destiny? And I would simply point you to what the Global Guide of Heartfulness says. The guide says, try it and see. You're the experiment, the experimenter, and the result of the experiment. And you will notice four evolutionary principles as you do so. The first principle of our destiny is that only we can change it and we can change it only in the present. The past is behind us. We can learn from it, but we can't change what's already happened. The second principle is that we create destiny for ourselves by our everyday thoughts, our everyday thoughts, our actions, our likes and dislikes. So those tendencies that we were talking about at the beginning, becoming more self-aware, letting some of the things that hold us back fall away. All of that helps us design our destiny. Every day, in the moment, by how we think and how we act. The third principle is that we need to work on the mind to design our destiny. That's what we were talking about when the mind is very noisy, as noisy as a raging ocean or a turbulent sea, we really can't hear the guidance from within. So we need to regulate the mind and make our mind our friend. Just like when there is light everywhere and scattered, a laser beam makes it focused, and then it is useful to us in more ways than otherwise. And to work on our mind, we need a meditative practice, a contemplative practice. And the final principle is that we start with ourselves first. 
and then expand to include others. And a day will surely come when together we are capable of influencing the direction of humanity. That's a huge promise. But it is in our hands and it is the story of us. Thank you very much. And if you have any observations or questions, please bring them on May 8th when uh, we will have a live Q&A session. I'd love to uh, hear them and interact with you. And meanwhile, here is uh, an app, which is a free app, it's called Hearts App, which has recordings of the kind of relaxation we just did. And they have recordings that guide you through the meditation and you can download it and use it anytime. So with that, thank you very much. I really appreciate your time. Um, and I hope to see you on the 8th. Thank you. Bye-bye.